Flying a multi-engine airplane can open up a world of adventure, from reliable cross-country travel to new career options. This also presents new challenges, since the speeds and altitudes are higher, the systems are more complicated, and the emergency scenarios take more practice. This is Rob Ryder, host of Sporty's Pilot Training Courses. We're glad to have this opportunity to collaborate with the AOPA Air Safety Institute to bring you essential safety-related content from Sporty's multi-engine training course, free of charge. Whether you're new to multi-engine flying or a rusty multi-engine pilot, we trust this series will help you grasp important fundamentals that are key to operating safely in a multi-engine airplane. In this video, we'll cover how to prepare for and respond to an engine failure during takeoff. Before we talk about what to do when an engine quits unexpectedly, let's take a look at some of the performance calculations you will need to do before each flight in a multi-engine airplane. Looking through the POH for your airplane, you will see a number of familiar performance charts. There will be graphs, charts, or tables for takeoff and landing distances, normal climb performance, performance in normal cruise, range, and endurance and others that you've seen before. We won't spend any time on these here, but you should use many of them during your training. You should also see some new charts. Accelerate stop is common as is single engine rate of climb. You may find a chart for single engine service ceiling. Accelerate go or best single engine climb speed. These new charts are the ones we'll be looking at over the next few minutes. Like all airplane performance data, these charts were developed with a very experienced test pilot at the controls of a brand new airplane. Keep this in mind as you go through the planning process. Be conservative in your decision making. The accelerate stop distance is the distance required to accelerate from zero knots up to a specified speed. The takeoff is then aborted and the aircraft is brought to a stop. The chart will specify the speed and the conditions upon which it is based. It is often assumed that an engine failure is the reason for the abort. Some charts do specify this, others do not. Know the conditions for your airplane and don't assume something that isn't stated. Takeoffs may be aborted for other reasons and the distance has value in these situations as well. While not required for FAR Part 91 operations, it's a good idea to use the calculated accelerate stop distance as your minimum runway length requirement. The conservative pilot will add a buffer to the accelerate stop distance when determining if the runway is sufficient. The accelerate go distance starts out the same as accelerate stop. The aircraft starts out at zero and accelerates to a specified speed. At the specified speed, known as VEF, an engine is assumed to fail and the takeoff is continued. The accelerate go distance is the distance from the start of the takeoff roll until climbing over 50 feet above the ground. In many of the light twins with an accelerate go chart, VEF is assumed to be the liftoff speed. If the manufacturer of your airplane did not include an accelerate go chart, there's probably a reason why. Do not plan to continue a takeoff after an engine failure without this information unless sufficient speed and altitude have been obtained. Determining your single engine rate of climb is very important for multi-engine flying. Many of the decisions regarding your flight will be based upon this information. As with all charts, verify the conditions specified for this rate of climb. If the chart indicates that this climb rate is with the gear and flaps up and the propeller feathered, you won't get the calculated rate in any other configuration. Some manufacturers will list the climb penalties for variations from the stated conditions. Remember, even with the gear and flaps up and the inoperative engine's propeller feathered, your calculation may show a descent. As previously described, your single engine service ceiling is the altitude where the airplane's rate of climb will slow to 50 feet per minute. Some manufacturers include a chart for this ceiling. If one is not included, you can work backward using the single engine rate of climb chart. 
Start with a 50-foot rate of climb and work back to the altitude where this will be obtained. It's important to know these altitudes when planning a flight in a multi-engine airplane. In the event of an engine failure, while cruising at a higher altitude, your airplane will begin to descend. If your technique is perfect and the airplane is otherwise operating perfectly, you will drift down to the absolute ceiling. If everything is not perfect, the service ceiling may be a better altitude to use for planning. What kind of planning do you need which requires this number? Well, for one thing, you will need to compare this number to the terrain that you'll be flying over. If the terrain is higher than your single-engine service ceiling, you need to plan for alternatives along your route. Determine what airports you can reach during your single-engine descent. Find out if there is suitable lower terrain near your route which you can reach. If an engine failure will leave you without alternatives, consider if there is another route to your destination that has more options. The best single-engine rate of climb speed varies based upon weight and density altitude. Some manufacturers provide a chart or table to calculate the correct value. Other manufacturers only give the blue line value of VYSE. Every takeoff should be preceded by a takeoff briefing. During this briefing, you are telling yourself and your instructor what decisions you have made about the takeoff. This briefing is a statement of your emergency plan, so it can quickly be put into action if needed. The decisions you make may be critical to a successful outcome in the event of an emergency. The information presented here is a potential thought process for a light twin. It is not definitive. Your airplane and the conditions may warrant different decisions. A before takeoff briefing might sound something like this. This morning we'll be doing a normal takeoff on runway 4 with a static run up prior to brake release. We'll rotate at 85 and climb out at 120. Our departure will be straight out until we're 500 feet above the pattern and then we'll make a right turn on course up to 6,000 feet. In the event of an engine failure or other abnormality prior to rotation, we'll abort the takeoff. If we have an engine failure after takeoff and prior to gear retraction, we'll land straight ahead on the remaining runway. If we have an engine failure after gear retraction, we'll continue to take off straight ahead and enter a left-hand traffic pattern for a landing back on runway 4. An engine failure on the ground before VMC requires quick and appropriate action. Upon detecting a failure, or even an abnormality, you should reduce the power on both throttles to idle while maintaining directional control with the rudder pedals. These actions should be nearly simultaneous. Failure to perform either promptly and the airplane can end up off the side of the runway. As the takeoff progresses, your single engine rate of climb calculations come into play. For an engine failure after rotation, but prior to reaching VXSE or VYSE, you are in the most hazardous area of decision. In some cases, it may be best to retard both throttles and quickly transition to an approach and landing attitude. Land on the remaining runway and apply maximum braking consistent with safety. In other cases, it may be best to assume an attitude that will allow acceleration to VYSE work through the emergency checklist, and continue the takeoff. If there are obstacles and you are still below them, you will have to decide if a climb at VXSE will allow you to climb over them. Your single engine rate of climb calculations and experience as a multi-engine pilot will play a part in determining the best case for you during this phase of the takeoff. If your calculations tell you that the airplane won't climb even when cleaned up, your best option will be planning for an immediate landing. After accelerating past VYSE and climbing above any obstacles, you will likely be beyond any landable runway. You should have a positive rate of climb and your gear should be transiting up. Your plan for an engine failure at this point will be primarily dependent on your calculated performance of the aircraft. If you anticipate a reasonable climb on one engine, you would likely plan to follow the emergency procedures while continuing to climb. 
It is very similar to the engine failure procedure in cruise flight, except that we will go more quickly to securing the engine. As with cruise flight, fly the airplane first. Maintain directional and roll control while pitching for VYSE. Realize that VYSE on a single engine may be a lower pitch attitude than a two-engine climb at VY. Apply full power by pushing both sets of mixture, prop, and throttle controls full forward. Minimize the drag, ensuring that the flaps are up and the landing gear is up. Identify and verify the failed engine. Follow up the engine verification with feathering the propellers on the inoperative engine. Raise the dead engine slightly and set zero side slip. If performance and altitude permit, review the emergency checklist to ensure completion of appropriate items. The procedure for the airplane should become a rhythmic mantra, something like directional control, pitch for blue line, mixtures full, props full, throttles full, flaps up, gear up, identify, verify, feather, set zero side slip. Learn the mantra well, and it will stick with you when you really need it. After obtaining a safe altitude, you would either plan to enter the traffic pattern for a landing at the airport you just departed, or plan to proceed to a nearby airport with better landing options. The presence of VFR or IFR conditions could play a part in this decision. If you expect a descent on one engine, your altitude and rate of descent will determine your options. Like an engine failure in a single engine airplane, your best option may be a controlled descent nearly straight ahead. If altitude and performance permit, it may be possible to return to the airport, but you must maintain adequate flying speed while maneuvering. VYSE will provide the lowest rate of descent. To access all the videos in Sporty's multi-engine training course, visit us online at sporties.com slash courses.